Hi, Tracy Lewis from Stuff and Things. Today I want to talk about stitched all around, specifically the dies. There's this particular die that is actually a stitch pattern that you make on the surface of your cardstock. And I'm also going to use this one to go along with it. Um, they basically leave a pattern on the surface of the cardstock, and I wanted to review what I have discovered. What I have discovered with this crisscross pattern is that where the X's are, you have a little center. I'm, I saved some for you to see. They are little teeny tiny stars and not all of them come out. So I was looking at comparing the effect of the different colors of possible cardstock that I could put as a mat for this. Traditionally, I would go dark light, semi-dark, dark white. So this would be what I would traditionally do as a rule. And as I was looking at it, I see that the little X's show as dark and I didn't like that contrast. I didn't think that was enough contrast. So I went ahead and thought about reversing my mats, which then ends up giving a nice contrast through the X's. Then I noticed not all of my X's when I had um, ran this through the die cut machine, I noticed that there were a few of these little tiny X's. In fact, there's one left, there's one, and there's one. So I took a piercing tool and I simply poked out all but a few of them. I left the few so that I could video this. And then you run your hands along the back to make sure. And then here I have a few tiny, those are little tiny stars. But you know, when you're putting together a nice card, I actually want this to be a clean and simple looking card with not a lot of layers to it. So for me, in order to make it look the way I'm after, I need to make sure that these X's aren't, don't have any material in them. I think I have now got all of them cleaned out. I will take all of my little tiny microscopic stars and we'll throw them away. So now for the assembly part, I will show you what it's going to look like and then I'll go away and build it. It's going to be a thin mat of white so we can have that contrast I talked about. I will probably go ahead and cut my base using early espresso. And this is wood textures. This particular DSP is carrying through to next year. This little line here is from the Flourish die set which is also going to be carrying over to next year, uh, next season, which actually the next year starts in June. I have to move my, my little bow over. And then I have that copper heart that's already in place, and then I'm gonna put that so it's just going to be a nice, simple congratulations card. So now I'm going to go away and I've got to cut some pieces here and then I'll get it all assembled and come back and show you guys what it looks like. And I really want to say that these uh, new dies that they're coming out with that add a pattern on the cardstock there. Another thing that Stampin' Up! is doing this year is uh, embossing. So that has been around for a while, but they haven't really gone into the the dye embossing part where you don't, you have a texture like this that it doesn't go pierce holes in the cardstock. And that's some different sets that do that, like with some leaves. And I have not bought any of the dies that do that yet, but I'm really liking where they're going. I think that these are going to make some really fun cards this year. I will be right back. Hey, I thought I would show one other piece of these new types of dies. Another thing that they've been doing, but they've the Stampin' Up! has done this for a couple of years now, is they have these really delicate dies. And the question always is, well, what glue do I use? And I, being that I don't have a lot of space, 
have just been using this mono glue. It has a very small tip. It's probably not as delicate as the fine tip glue that you can get from Stampin' Up, but the mono glue only takes up one spot and I don't want to have to find room for another type of glue. So I just use this in very tiny increments. It comes out very thin for you. You can use a toothpick if you want, which I have in the past, but now I'm getting used to using it just like this with all these delicate little thin cuts that, die cuts that everybody is making these days. So again, I will be back when everything is done. All right, I have discovered that you want to be very careful with your snail. I had to make sure that I put my snail in the outer regions so that there wasn't a shiny surface showing through. Even these X's, you want to make sure that your snail doesn't doesn't show through. It's, it's a pretty nitpicky thing, but just a point I wanted to note with these particular dies. All right, so I just ran out of snail, which I have been making quite a few cards lately. And my, I'm still at my in-laws, so the rest of my supplies are in the trailer. So I'm gonna use the mono glue. I have seen this done a lot of times, and I have never myself actually done it. So let's just see how this works. I guess the, the biggest risk you have here is in placing it wrong which I'm notorious for, so we'll see how it goes. Might want to get some closer to the edge here. All the way around. All right, let's just see how this goes. <gasps> A little bit of an experiment. All right, that was not too bad. And you know what's funny is this card actually looks just fine. I only have the twine, the two die cuts into the wood trim, the little heart, and then the white die cut glued on top. And it actually looks just fine, just like it is. So now I have my last piece here, which is gonna be the sentiment assembly. It's all ready to go. I will add, again, I'm going to use my mono glue because I have no more snail. Luckily, on Saturday, I'm heading to my friend Libby's, and if I need to get a snail from her, I can. And then I believe early next week, we are finally going to be able to pick up our trailer, which will be great. And then things can return more to normal. All right, so I want this part of the bow up. So I've lifted it up. Again, I wanna make sure I do everything straight since we have glue back there, not tape. All right, so there is my Lots of layers, lots of stitching. It looks so cute. And I really like the uh, twine that I bought. I still can contemplate whether I want to do pearls or anything, but I suspect that I'm going to leave this one as is. The last thing I need to do is add, I need to trim down a piece of white for the inside, and this will be done. Hopefully you found my little tips on the using these new dies that leave a pattern in the paper and the fact that I noted that these little X's actually are little pop-outs and you want to make sure they're all popped out so you can see the underlying color coming through and I hope that that shows uh, as clear as it shows for me. Thanks for watching!